Morning. All right. Uh, just got everything turned on in here. Unloaded a little bit. Got a few things to do before I run to the hot rod shop. I just have to wipe down the rings, make sure they're perfectly clean, and then we'll set everything on, and that will be ready to go. We just gotta wait for someone to help me lift the head up right there. So once they're back, when either Gustavo, Chris, someone at the shop area here, uh, we'll get that set down and bolted down, and we'll be one step closer. So. These fire rings, you can see there's cuts in the top that sit into grooves that get created in the head. And then on the bottom, it sits flat against the block. Cuts facing up. Oh, he did the cut ring. Mm hmm. Make sure the ridges are all facing up on these as you do it. And one thing I'm learned is they never like to fully see, like they'll pop up right here. So you gotta kind of work them into place and then make sure that everything sets down nice and flush right here. Our gasketed areas are sealed here and right here. And we are ready drop the head on once we clean the underside of it really well and make sure everything's good there. I'm gonna have to lift it up though. Can I get y'all's help with that? All right, we didn't film that because it's a pain in the ass, but we just lowered the head on. Now I gotta drop all the head studs in and start torquing them down. Uh, I'll get them all lined up and then make sure I'll tap a few and make sure everything's fully seated and then slightly tighten and then we'll do the torque sequence all over the way. These washers set in right here, but those have to be completely clean of oil. So, so you spin it all the way down until it bottoms out. So there's bottom, and then you bring it back like a quarter turn. and drop all their spacers on. Got the nicer breaker bar out. The big guy. Ooh, look at that. To the 50 and 85 or 50, 75, 85. Well, I add 85 instead of 75 like last time. 50 foot pounds. There's 70, one, two, three, four, five, 75 foot pounds locked in. Chris is over there doing his cams. We're getting shit done today. We're back. Uh, took a break, ate, uh, let this head set at 75 foot pounds. Now we're gonna take a, a quick second and torque it to 85. I finished the pan as well, cutting and stuff like that, so it's ready once I get a bung to weld. Uh, all we can really do right now is cams. So I'm getting everything ready here to start putting the cams in. One thing I'm doing differently this time, just for timing, I'll probably pull it once I'm done, but I'm going to go ahead and keep a marker that I can see just a little better at all times. Now it may look slightly off TDC here, but when the motor is degreed until the oil filter housing is vertical and you look straight down, she's lined up. All right, our next step is to go ahead and turn the motor back or forward. Your choice, I go back or tend to. TDC is at the front, it's near TDC at the back. It'll drop everything about an inch down or so and that allows you to fully roll your cams and move them around when you're installing them without interfering with your pistons. First things first now is our cam trays themselves, which means I'm gonna have to turn the motor again, get it on its side, get my magnets out, and get all these ready to set back on. All right, E, intake, A, exhaust. So we'll start with that one because it's closer to us. 
Uh, this would be our exhaust cam. This one's our intake cam, you can tell by the front. And we have our exhaust caps and our intake caps. All right, good for me. You can separate the nuts, man. Just keep it organized and it'll go back together the same way it came apart. All right, yeah, there's pizza there if you want it. Not you though, you can't have any. Anyone wants some. Okay. So these are kind of lashed. Uh, essentially, I did them all at between three and four thousandths on the intake and five and six thousandths on the exhaust. And we expected about a thousandths increase once they got beaten on and opened up a little bit. These all went out a thousandth. Some of, one of them, 1 .015, 0 0.015, whatever it is. A few of these went from six to eight. 0 0.008. So as long as that is all right, I asked the guy who makes these shims. As long as this 0 0.008 is within spec, I'm just going to leave it and run it. So we should be fine there. If you throw this cam at TDC, there's cutouts in it. And then the M50 cam is just a little more narrow, as you can see. And we can get to these bolts. So we're going to go ahead and torque all of the head studs to 85 foot pounds. All right, so everything is in spec uh, with the cams. We just heard back from Perry, talked to a couple buddies who do a bunch of S54s. Uh, that 1,000 out is gonna be fine. If it starts to get noisy after like five events, I'll pull it apart and uh, I'll fix it then. But we have the top end together torqued and timed. It is uh, 14 Newton meters on all these caps. And then I align them out, kind of facing each other to start. Damn, dude. Kind of facing each other to start. And then I have a four degree advance block on my M54 intake cam. And we have a non Vanos 101, or basically uh, zero degree cam here. His dog, he's under there eating something and coughing, man. Look at him. What are you doing, you big asshole? Everything is ready here. Uh, all we have to do tomorrow is throw all the gears on the front and the chains and the tensioner. And we'll uh, go ahead and set this back to TDC and set the chain together and get it timed. Uh, guys, God damn it. Sorry, Andrew. No, it's my dog, too. Welcome back. I'm, uh, it's like 6.30 in the morning. I was able to shoot over to the shop for a few hours to get some more work done before I go to work. We'll go ahead and get these uh, front cam gears and chains all on and uh, work towards getting it aligned and uh, timed. And remember that TDC is just a little off on this thing because this is supposed to be when the motor's bent. If you look there, the red line is what we're looking for. We'll do the exhaust cam gear. With it tense, we're about there. That should give us full rotation. Normally, it's supposed to be just a little more because the chain's supposed to tension more when you tighten it here and press in. But uh, we'll, only, we'll see how much. We'll go ahead and put our damper in. So to make this damper, you take a normal one, go ahead and pop out the center section in your spring. Make sure you're nice and empty. Perfect, and then take eight pennies. This works it's really fast. It doesn't damage anything because it's the OEM one. Make sure your washer's on, and then you're just gonna spin this until you have full resistance hand tight. Watch that gear. There we go, right about there. Now, slightly off the center, ready to go.
Remember this long part goes in so that you can still have a usable sleeve there. If not, it'll just be flat. This is unusable. Got this all ready to go. That's what you're looking for. We're hand tightening them for now. Like I said, if you tighten them, you can't adjust it. And we have to install the vanna still. It looks like this one was facing to the back. All right. After our two millimeter, this is where people get confused. This spring, you can see how it has concave to it uh, the this outer lip needs to go in the two millimeter people will flip that around and then this part grabs on the right here you can see grabs on the inside of the four millimeter everything's ready to install the vanos next step though is to take a Vanos tool, let me switch hands. Take a Vanos tool. We're gonna move everything all the way to the right, like that, to get ready for the Vanos to install, because as you press it on, you spin this counterclockwise, and it sucks the Vanos into place. That's all the way right. These cams are yeah, basically aligned, they're good. These are loose. Go ahead and Vanos. So, one thing to note, the plunger has to be all the way in, otherwise, once you assemble it and it sucks itself in, it's gonna mess your cam up by a few degrees. Good. Feels great from when we rebuilt it. No play at all. All right. So, wiggle this until the teeth start to go in, like that. And take your tool. Remember, we're going to go right to left here and press forward as we do. And there's the vanos. Basically adhered. Needs a little more. there and now we'll air test it here in a little bit to confirm that it's working uh, we just got to put I got a little plug you put 12 volts to it and then as soon as you touch air into the system it will move the cam now that that's done we'll go ahead and check timing on the cams or alignment on the cams there's a four degree advance and then that is straight as well here. We are going to uh, tighten these four E10 Torx. Those are 16 foot pounds, but because of the offset deal with this cam, as you can see, it's gonna be a little harder for us to get to those. So we will try to, uh, we can use like a 10 mil wrench at an angle, like the 12 point of it, it helps get it tight. And since it's only 16 foot pounds, it's not a whole lot. Uh, and then once we turn the motor slowly over, check everything a couple times, then we can turn it slowly and get in each of these holes and torque them all accordingly. Eight mil with a small head, not one of the adjustable ones. See, I mean, that's full contact. I mean, we are moving right along here. Uh, tight, tight, Vanos is on. We'll go ahead and... Mm. Tension and in time. Just gonna pull this one up and mess with it and see how it looks coming back down. Also, now that everything is timed and locked, you see there's no movement to the cam or anything when we undo that, everything's good. We can now pull our dummy tensioner.
Oh yeah. Nice and tight. Fuck it. Let's turn it over. <laughs> yep. Red lines are still good. Wow. Big compression. Got a lot of compression. Now let's very slowly. That's that's it. Now you guys better be lined up, because then I can go home. Oh yeah. All right, that was like four rotations, and we're back in line. Let's go ahead and test the uh, Vano solenoid now. All right, so we have a battery. Uh, I've got the airline and I've got a little cable set up here, ran to the Vanos. Uh, what we're gonna do is put air into the system right here to simulate oil pressure. And then we'll throw power to the solenoid and we'll see if we get, it's like six or eight millimeters of adjustment here. And you, you measure between this guy right here and uh, I believe it was this metal lip next to it, uh, but I'll put it up. Either way, let's see if this works. All right, so uh, Vano's test checked out. You could see full clearance here as that opened and closed. Uh, so that means that, I mean, this is all working fine. You can tell it's back in time afterwards just by looking at that. It would have been chunked over if it got stuck or something like that. Uh, yeah. Spark plug tube gaskets or whatever you want to call them are on. This gasket's on. Everything's been gasketed. All that's left is our intake cam cap. It clears everything there. There it is, cam capped. All right, before we flip it back over and call it done, I just wanted to show y'all, if y'all haven't done this, please do this. It's so, so important for M52s. That's a, I think it's an Achilles oil pump shaft that I pressed into this pump. And then I have the safety wire and the reverse locking nut. So this one's not going anywhere. Uh, you can weld them or you can do something like this. But that's an upgraded pump with an upgraded shaft. So yeah, I really appreciate you guys. This is all we can do here for now. It's all we can do here for now. I mean, we've been doing this since August or so and blew it up in November and then rebuilt it for a couple of events and then lost another set of rings, ring lands. And now we're finally back with a fully forged assembly, new bearings. She's gonna be a good one.